Hi, I'm Keith Reynolds, Senior Advisory Architect for Security Products here at ServiceNow. Today we're going to be talking about and showing a new Tokyo feature for vulnerability response for manual vulnerable item or VIT ingestion. So the core use cases for this feature as I see it are first and foremost for my own life as an SC, creating a repeatable set of demo data that I can rerun at will. This helps when I'm showing what vulnerability response can do. Second is testing. Whether this is part of your formal testing processes or you're just using this to validate configuration changes, this allows you to load data at a scale that is appropriate for more robust testing than just manually entering a single record. As it relates to some of the core functionality of vulnerability response, all of the VITs will be run against CI matching, assignment, remediation task, and target date rules. So it's a great way to test at scale without having a scanner connected to your instance like you'd have in a non-production instance situation. Lastly, a quick note on production data. Yes, this could be used to load manual findings or other findings from disconnected systems. I'd work through some fairly rigorous requirements about what can be loaded and by whom before you roll this out as a source of live vulnerability data. So let's talk about the mechanics of how this works. First, there's a link to download an Excel or CSV based template, and we'll talk about how the data interacts with that template in a moment. Secondly, there's a change auto close configuration setting just for you to be aware of. This will automatically close manual findings after a set number of days if you turn it on. So be aware that that feature exists. And lastly is the import file and everyone knows how an import file works, right? So we click it, select the file and submit it and that will load our results. Before we do that load, we have to load the data into our template. So this template allows me to put in a lot of information about my findings including information about the asset, asset ID, MAC address, FQDN, IP address, host name, so forth and so on. Information about the vulnerability, so maybe the vulnerability ID um, and or port protocol and proof, which will be loaded on the detection record itself. And then lastly, in the last column there, you'll see the state. And here's where you'll show whether or not the detection is open or fixed so we can test our closed loop remediation cycles and vulnerability response. So with that, let's get into a demo. Okay, so starting with the manual vulnerable item ingestion page, you can see there's a link here for downloading the template in Excel or CSV. I've already done that in Excel. I'll bring that template up right behind the screens here. Um, and as you can see, I have this pre-filled out. This is the same one we looked at in that PowerPoint presentation just a moment ago. We have asset IDs defined. So I'm representing three different computers here, uh, ending in asset ID 01, 02, 03, respectively. Um, and they have different levels of information uh, attached to them, including IP addresses, host names, MAC addresses, whatever I might have there to match up against my configuration item matching rules. I've also enumerated the vulnerability uh, found on each of these. And you can see this represents about four or five different vulnerabilities across those three computers that we found. And then lastly, out on the right hand side here, you can see the state and I'm Specifying all of these are opened except for one that I'm marking as fixed, just so you can see the differences of how that's imported uh, when we bring it in. And then lastly, to mention as well, if I specify port protocol and or proof um, up here, that will be included on the attached detection record for the vulnerable item as well. So that's all there is to it. Fill that out and make sure it's saved. And when you're back in the UI here, all we do is click on import file, pick the proper file, open it up and click on submit. And this will start the process of importing that file. It will open a new tab here, as you see, and this will show me the progress as this file imports. Now I can refresh this a couple times to uh, see when this is done. It will also pop up here in a moment and tell me that it's completed.
And you can see with that last fresh there, <laughs> you can see with that last refresh there uh, that we have success. The state is completed here on our import. And we'll go over and take a look at some of the results. Okay, so as we come over to vulnerable items and I look at all the vulnerable items created today, and I've simply done that with a filter up here in the top where we see all vulnerable items created today. This represents those that I just imported in that last uh, batch. So 18 vulnerable items imported here. And you can see they have their various risk scores, each of them, um, some calculated up as high as 100 um, some calculated as low as 30. And you see actually on this last vulnerable item that's imported, this is the one that we imported that was fixed. So we can see that status came through appropriately um, and the state aligned closed on that particular vulnerability uh, or vulnerable item. And if we take a look at any of these vulnerable items, they look like any other vulnerable item that we import from other sources, except that the source here is manual, right? We could see the assignment group or the assignment rules ran. So in here, we hit the assign to CI support group um, rule, which in our case was the Windows Server support team. We've calculated our remediation target date, uh, which is out in February 8th. Um, that was calculated seven days from now uh, based on the risk score, which was calculated at 100. And our remediation target rule hit that critical risk rating rule. And, and uh, we're not going to go through the configuration of all these rule sets today, um, but just want you to know that as you import all of these items, uh, they are run against all of those core rule sets in vulnerability response um, that calculate all of this for a vulnerable item. Uh, as well, the detection record is filed here as, um, that we see. So the status of that detection is open. And if I import this vulnerability again from that same source, we'll have additional detections with last found, first found, all being calculated on these records, just as they would coming from your scanner integrations. And to wrap up the point that all of our vulnerability configurations run here, if we look at remediation tasks here, again, created today, uh, we can see all of my remediation tasking that has been created uh, as a result of this import. A uh, new group with a risk score of 88, 86, 71, respectively, containing eight, four, and five vulnerable items in there. Of course, no remediation taking place on those yet. So again, just the point that all of these configurations within the vulnerability response application are running against this set of data. So use that to import and test those application uh, assignment rules, your classification, your group rules, everything else within here, and make sure you have a sound basis for how everything's gonna interact in your system. This will help you learn vulnerability response and how it works. This will help you test your configurations thoroughly and accurately. And this will get you efficient in your vulnerability response program.